Through my entire career of shooting video, there have been things that I have longed for with gear, longed for with shots. You see some footage somewhere and you think, oh, I would love to shoot with a camera like that. I would love to film that at like the highest frame rate possible so it's super slow. I would love a camera with more dynamic range. I would love to get some aerial shots of this. I would love to get real close with an action cam and dive into the water so it feels like we're in the moment. I've had all those experiences. There's been times in filmmaking where I've, I've had all those thoughts. There's never been a time, never there has been a time where I've thought to myself, I would love to capture this in 360. <laughs> it's never happened. It's never, ever, ever happened until I used it and now it's happening. What's up everybody? Peter McKinnon here and welcome back to Monday Morning. I know, I know, it's Monday. We're gonna get through this together. I haven't even had coffee yet, but today we're talking about a new little camera. Well, it's not really new. I've kind of missed the boat on this. Literally like every single friend of mine has already done videos on this thing. What the hell is this? What is even going on? So we're gonna put it into the time-lapse mode. It also does 3K at 100 frames per second. And people are like, what are you doing? I said, hold up, wait a minute, let me show you. It kind of looks like there's just a floating camera. This little thing, I didn't think I'd like it, kind of wanted to hate it, kind of love it. It's the Insta360 ONE X 360 cam, action cam. I've never talked about 360 on this channel before. I've never owned a camera. GoPro Fusion stuff has always been stitched and done for me. I've never had to deal with anything in this realm as far as 360 video goes. This is my very first introduction. Wow, I kind of wish I got here earlier because this thing is legit. Here's a little look at it, okay? Look at that, sleek, nice and slim. For those of you that don't know what 360 video is, it's essentially a camera that captures everything around you and then it's stitched after the fact. So you basically have the option to choose which frame you want because it captured everything around you. So you don't have to worry about missing something. You heard something happen behind you. Oh, I wasn't filming. Gone are the days you were filming because it's 360 and you can just move the camera after the fact and choose that frame if you want. So it's next level stuff and I didn't really fully appreciate how cool and how clever and how creative you could get with it until actually taking it out and using it. So before we get into that stuff, when you buy this camera, you get the camera itself. They give you a little neoprene case. I kind of wish it was like a hard case because you can still press the buttons through it, but that's the little case that it comes with. They also give you like the selfie stick because this stick, the software, when you're using this, the software removes the stick in post. So it looks like a floating camera is following you around. Some of you may have seen some snowmobile footage of me lately and a lot of people were asking everybody that I sent this to that looked super cool who was filming that were you was a drone following you nobody understands like filmmakers get it but like regular people muggles if you will nobody understands how it works because you just look at it and you're like ah uh, what is how is the camera following you and then who turned it and then how is it now looking like was there a, were you flying a drone like, no it's super crazy so their software if you're using this selfie stick with it this thing extends really like look at that that's like a, that's some daredevil stuff right there. Really, really cool and the software removes it completely. So if you were just holding it casually with the camera on the end and you had your hand kind of just like this and you're just walking around, it looks like you're kind of walking around normally anyway and the camera is following you if you're just being nonchalant about it versus like carrying it like that. There's a lot of really cool possibilities with this stick. So if you're on their website and you buy this, it is, I'm looking right now, it's $517 Canadian with a memory card and this camera. And then if you add the selfie stick bundle, it ends up being $537 Canadian. It's not like they're gouging you $90 for this accessory. Like I'm a big fan of that. I don't feel like I'm being taken advantage of when I'm trying to, you know, get the whole combo and you end up spending spending $200 extra that you weren't planning on because you need all the other things. Kudos for them for making this stuff affordable. It makes the experience more fun. Uh, the battery life on this is about 60 minutes of nonstop recording. So once you charge it up, you got about an hour to use it. 
The battery is found in this little door here that just flips open with this latch and it just pulls straight out. So it only comes with one battery, but it's pretty good. I've used this since I got it and I haven't had to charge it yet. I haven't found myself recording like at length videos with this. It's mostly just like, hey, that would be a cool shot to be 360. So you fire it up, you get the shot and then you kind of turn it off. I've gotten to be pretty conservative with batteries of devices like this just because I've always had the worst experience with my GoPro batteries because if I'm using that in the cold, in some of this footage that you're seeing, I took both the GoPro out and the Insta360 One X. The GoPro battery was at 80%. I got this shot right here with the GoPro. So you can see it's a lot wider. It looks a lot more like a, maybe like a vlog camera. After that shot, battery died. Straight up from 80%, those three shots, battery died. So I was like, well, that sucks. I didn't bring an extra battery because I didn't expect it to die. Uh, this thing didn't die at all. I charged it out of the box for like 25 minutes and it lasted like the whole day. So that was great. So I was able to hold this thing with my brake hand and just throttle with my right hand and it captured everything. So check out this shot here. This is me riding the snowmobile and then because everything was captured in 360 with this camera, right before I go under the tunnel, I was able to move the camera to show me from the front and then move it back afterwards. So you're programming those camera moves in after the fact. So all I was doing in person is I was just riding. Just went under the tunnel, ducked, and went back out. I didn't move at all. I moved this after the fact. And that's what makes it look so cool because the software with this app that lets you do all those camera moves removes the pole, which makes it so deceptive and so useful for filming yourself, filming B-roll of yourself. Those certain instances, it is amazing. I think Maddie was actually just in BC and he was walking behind a helicopter and he had it fully extended behind him. So he was getting shots in slow-mo of his feet walking up to a helicopter. You don't need anyone else there to help you. You don't need a buddy. You just grab this thing and get creative with the angle that you're using it at. You're not going to get the same depth of feel that you would get with like a 1DX. All of the settings and the camera specs that this offers is going to make that shot look a lot better. But in a pinch, this is phenomenal. I would have no problems using this in vlogs. And in fact, I have, and I think I'm gonna continue to do so because it's small, it's amazing, and it takes up just such a small little footprint in my camera bag. So I'm hyped on that. What I find particularly cool with this 360 stuff is not necessarily programming in all those cool camera moves after the fact, but while they are amazing and super deceptive and they look really cool, I think finding ways to use it as an extra angle, that's impossible. When I was texting Casey about this, we were saying, what's really cool about the technology is it allows you to get shots that you would just otherwise never be able to get. I liken it to him walking onto the airplane where it looks like a drone is following him into his airplane seat. If you just saw this clip five years ago, you'd be like, no one would understand what's going on. And for the most part, people still don't understand what's going on. It's an impossible angle that no one would be able to get unless someone was filming him, holding up a camera, walking backwards, trying to get that same shot, but by yourself being able to get that and then choose what angle it is, finding something super creative and unique, and then just locking it off to that angle, not really using it as a 360 cam. You don't have to get into the gimmicky stuff where you can see the whole planet and you're just like a little thing and it's a sphere. Like, I'm not really into that. Once you get the app open, you can really program how much you show of your environment you can really bring it out it makes it a lot more wide and spherical or you can drag it right in it makes it 16 by 9 with almost no crop at all so let's talk about the workflow for a minute with the insta 360 one x that's the longest name ever usually the workflow when it comes to stitching 360 video is where it gets really tedious and, and that's what scares a lot of people away from using it but they have an app that does it all for you and there's different ways to capture the media you can set tracking points and attach those tracking points to one individual and then it'll just track that person and make nice camera moves for you. You can do it in real time. It does look insane. Like if you're recording right now and that sled's coming up to the bridge, you gotta fully whip around and then you gotta fully whip back to get that shot because you're actually turning the camera in real time. You're turning it in 3D space in real time and it's capturing what your body's doing. You're looking around the frame by physically moving yourself and looking around. Now it looks ridiculous, but it's actually my favorite way to record. And that's one of the things I never really liked about 360 video when it was posted online. It was like, use your arrow keys to look around the frame. I don't know where I'm supposed to be looking. What if I look left and something cool happens on the right because there's no direction. Like I just want it to be clear for them. I want you to watch my videos and you see what I want you to see. I don't want you to see what I'm not sure what you're seeing or what I don't want you to see or what like you're looking at the sky when something awesome is happening on the ground. But I like that once it's exported and we put it in the 
the frame, you're just seeing what I want you to see, but I'm controlling all aspects of that 360 video, which makes it really exciting. So resolution wise, this will shoot up to 5.7K at 30 frames a second, 4K at 50 frames a second, and it'll do 3K at 100 frames per second. So those are some tasty options to get you some really cool looking stuff. Now let's talk about stabilization. You can see me riding this sled. Like I was riding on a bumpy, hard packed snow and ice lake, and it's pretty smooth. Or this footage here of Holiday and myself riding scooters through San Francisco over bumpy roads. It's pretty good. The stabilization in this is pretty on par with the Hero 7. I still think the Hero 7 and takes it home as far as their stabilization is just ridiculous in the new seven. But the battery life, the quality of this image, I kind of prefer to the GoPro and it was pretty easy to use. Now, when it comes to the interface of this camera, that's where I think it lacks. All you have is this one screen right here. This is the record button, this is the power button, but you also have to use both those buttons to switch between modes. So I end up taking photos of myself by accident or I shut it off by accident or somehow I'm in interval mode and I, I don't really know how I got there. Now, if you're paired with your phone with the Wi-Fi app, you're able to just set all the settings super easy through your phone. So that's how I prefer to do it. But for those instances where you don't have access to your phone and you just want to bust this out, grab a couple clips. If it's not already set for me on the mode that I like, I have a hard time getting to the right mode. I'm sure it's just practice, but I like something that's super fast, super intuitive. I don't need practice to use the menus because they're just menus. So I would love to see a version that has like a bigger screen where you can actually like toggle through stuff with like a joystick or up and down arrows or touchscreen arrows or just something to make it a little more like user friendly. It's not unusual usable but it could be better. The other thing that I'm not the biggest fan of, aside the interface here, is actually the layout and how the app works. I think the app's kind of confusing. It has everything you need to do, everything you need to do. I just feel like it could be laid out better. The UI is a little bit all over the place. I had to have Maddie come over and, and Matt, his editor, show me multiple times what to do and how to cut and how to use different options. They have a little bit of a tutorial, but I literally had to go look up on YouTube a few times how to do certain things just because I was unsure. So the app is a little confusing again with practice and if you use this camera all the time you'd be a whiz at it no problem but when you've got a lot of different devices and you're just trying to use different things to make little things happen in one bigger video you're not spending a ton of time with just one device you're spending a ton of time across many devices if one's really confusing both in the app and the interface of the camera it just slows me down a little bit and it makes the whole experience like a little less fun those would be my takeaways for things I would hope are fixed or tweaked in future iterations of app updates and interface updates with the physical camera itself. They do offer waterproof cases for these. Maddie was snowboarding down an actual mountainside in Whistler with this, getting it covered in snow, and he said he had no problems. That's not to say go do that because it's not advertised as waterproof, but it was able to keep up a little bit. But if you wanna go full submersion and you wanna do more marine activities with the Insta360 one, I would definitely recommend getting that waterproof case for it. So that would be one advantage that the GoPro has over this is that there's no more cases for a GoPro, it's just waterproof itself. Now the reason I keep making these references from the GoPro to the Insta360 One Axis because that's where all the questions are gonna come in. That's where I came in. I was saying to my friends, what does it do that a Hero 7 doesn't do for me? And a lot of what I was coming up with was the Hero 7 does this quite a bit, but the ability to get the most impossible angles and program your camera moves in after the fact and capture footage that you've never been able to capture for in your entire career with something this small and this easy where the software is self-stitching out the very thing you're holding, you just can't beat that. It's, it's pretty exciting stuff. Super cool camera. You can really get creative with it. And ultimately, if it comes down to me recommending this, two months ago, I wouldn't have, but that's like someone that says they don't like a certain type of food and they've never tried it. But then when they try it, you know, Sometimes their mind has changed. And in this case, my mind has changed. I'm a huge fan of this camera and I cannot wait to use it this summer and see future iterations of it because I think this is this good already. It's only gonna keep getting better. So it really depends on what you are using it for, your personal needs. Do I recommend it? Yes, I recommend it. Do I think you'll be happy if you buy it and get some super cool footage that you're insanely amped on? Absolutely, I think you will, no question. So with that being said, that's the insta 361 X. That's it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching today. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you got some insight out of it. Hit that like button if you like this video. Smash it if that's something that you're into. 2019 style. Subscribe if you aren't already. And, and I will see you guys tomorrow for Two Minute Tuesday. That's never two minutes. You know, it is what it is. Peace. I don't have my hat. I don't have my hat. See ya. Like, I would have no problem. Oh no, my monitor just died. One second. 
All right, we're back. I stole batteries from Maddie's USR. Don't tell him. <laughs> he probably comes into the office all the time and he's like, why is my stuff always dead? It's because of me. Oh, I took his light too. Forgot to turn it on. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Shh, say nothing. I think that made sense. I feel like my nose is gonna start bleeding because this is so confusing and I'm just gonna like start vomiting blood because this is, that got out of hand real fast. Vomiting blood, what does that have to do with anything? It's just so soft. It really is just so soft. Oh, this arm is badly swollen, man. Look at this extra bump right here. That's not supposed to be there. Looks like I got a beard. Oh, that hurts. Once I was getting coffee at a coffee shop and it was like winter and I had my hood up and I had my hair coming out the front and then I had my jacket on, but the, the hood was up like, you couldn't see it on the sides here. It was just like coming out the front like this. This is ridiculous. And this girl was like, you have a really long goatee. And I was like, oh no, 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 that's, that's, that's weird and unnecessary. I'm gonna go.